and welcome back where I try to salvage and rebuild this broken Lamborghini transmission. As you may have noticed, all the gears and all the synchros have been disassembled from the infra shaft as well as the output shaft over there. So next step is to actually go in and inspect all the gears, all the synchros, and actually measure the lock and collars as well as the shifting forks to figure out whether any of these components are out of spec. Now, the first step is to inspect all of the synchros, the blocker rings, as well as inspect all the teeth on the blocker rings, as well as the dog teeth on these gears. And I'll show you more in detail of how you do it. After that, I'm going to go in and inspect each gear and look for any marks, any scoring to figure out what happened to these gears. And then we'll be able to assess whether this transmission can be salvaged. So let's start off by inspecting the synchros as well as the dog teeth of the gears as well as the locking collar right here. So this is the speed gear for our third gear actually, needle bearing here. This one here are the synchros right here. As you can see, oh, if I can get this off, here you go. This is your blocker ring here as well as the synchro materials. You can see this is called a triple cone synchro, meaning there are three pieces, materials that help speed up, slow down the speed gear to match the speed of the input shaft. So you can see here just the inner cone, is the middle cone, and then the outer cone. There, there are two cones that have this nice clutch material here. So first thing is to actually really inspect the clutch material to see if there's any uneven wear as well as any spots that have any uneven abrasions or whatnot. So I'm going to go and inspect the inside as well as the outside of both of these cones as well as this metal ring here to look for any high spots, low spots, anything that is out of the ordinary that doesn't look right to inspect these synchros to make sure that they visually they look okay. Now, second step is to actually test out how well these synchro cones work and actually slow down the speed gear. Now, how we're going to do that is we're going to start installing the synchro first. So right here, this inner cone, just the outer cone here, and then we have our We have our inner cone here, middle cone, as well as the outer cone here. And then we have a blocker ring. Right. Okay, so you, as you can see, so the best way to test if a synchro still works or if it uh, needs to get replaced is to is to just turn the blocker ring along with the synchro material. And then as you're turning, you need to apply some force towards the dog teeth of the speed gear here. And it should want to bite and move the rest of the gear here. So I'm turning here, I'm not applying any force. And as soon as I apply force this way, I push in, it wants to turn the gear as well. So that is how you would inspect how a synchro generally will work. You just need to go and inspect and and make sure that it turns along with the rotation of the of the blocker rings. Now, some transmissions do have a, a thing where you can check for clearance between the blocker ring and the dog teeth here. The service manual does not list any of that. So what you have to do is you just, again, visually inspect these cones here, as well as test for, um, test if the actual synchros can actually lock in and provide enough friction to turn the gear like so. Now, in addition to inspecting the cones, we also need to inspect these blocker teeth here and make sure that these crowns, these ridges are nice and sharp. They should not be dull and they should not be worn down uh, like so here. So overall what I'm seeing, it's pretty, every piece, every ring, 
every teeth here is actually pretty sharp so that's a good sign because otherwise if the teeth on the blocker ring are worn down it actually will make it more difficult to shift the locking collar onto the speed gear now in addition to inspecting the blocker ring on the synchro we also need to inspect the dog teeth here on the speed gear as well because the dog teeth need to be uh, again the these ridges here these the top ridges again where you see where the pointy ends are these need to be pretty sharp and not worn down as well as the size too the size should not show any uneven wear and tear on the size as well because what happens is the let's see which I'm trying to lock this in the teeth here on the locking collar will go slide in lock into the teeth between the teeth here on the speaker and then it's locked in and then as the input shelf rotates it's going to rotate uh, this speaker as well and then transfer the power onto this gear so one interesting thing to know just for your information this is actually fourth gear now right here is that fourth gear is has double cone synchros you can see here as you can see here there's only two material there's only one clutch ring as well as one metal ring and then you have your blocker ring right here so it's really interesting and i've looked at all the other synchros so first gear second gear and third gear they have triple cone synchros gears four five and six have double cone synchros now why would you want to use double cone versus triple cone the more cones you have on your synchro, the faster and smoother the synchro will slow down or speed up the speed gear and you'll be able to match the speed of the shaft onto the speed gear. So you'll be able to shift smoother and faster. And I can imagine first gear through third gear, you're going to need that given the torque of the Lamborghini Gallardo or the R8. So they decide to add in triple cones and then for fourth to sixth gear you really don't need that many synchros to match the speed of fourth to sixth gear since those gears are naturally tighter with respect to each other so they chose to use double cones and knowing this it makes sense since the shifting feel of first to third is different versus the shifting feel from fourth to six the best way I could describe it is that there's a lot more meat when I shift into one, two, and third gear. And then from third gear to fourth gear, there is a slight difference in the shifting feel that I'm getting. So yeah, if you ever happen to be driving a gated manual on a Lamborghini or a, an R8, the shifting feel from third gear to fourth gear, because since you're now going to be shifting from a triple cone, gear to a double cone gear, it will feel slightly different. So I think that's really interesting. So in addition to inspecting all of the synchros as well as the dog teeth on all these speed gears, I also need to measure the inner width here in this uh, collar here from, from this point to this point and see if, if it's still within uh, specifications. Because as you continue to use this shifting collar, the fork will rub against either ends of the locking collar and it will eventually wear down. So I'm gonna go measure this locking collar for gear three to four, as well as the locking collar for gears five and six. Oddly enough, the service manual does not give you any specifications on measuring the locking collar for gears one and two. So in addition to inspecting the gears, we also need to do our due diligence and inspect the wear of the shift forks as well. And we need to measure the distance from this end all the way to this end here and check if the wear is within specifications as well. If you find out that these forks are out of spec, meaning that they have been worn too thin, it means that you need to replace those shift forks. Again, just like the locking collars for first gear and second gear, there are no specifications for the first gear and second gear fork. So let's talk about the good news. Good news, these forks are still within spec. There was 
there was one lake where it was barely inspected. It was like 9.54, 9.55, and the minimum uh, spec was 9.55. So it's still serviceable. These forks are still good. All the synchros as well as the teeth on the speed gears and the teeth on the blocker rings, they're all okay, actually. So all of them are serviceable and can go back into the transmission. So that's good news. However, practically every helical gear has been scored. As you can see here, these are the score marks on third gear. And third gear has the worst scoring of all the gears I've seen in this transmission. Now, if you remember what happened to this transmission, it had low oil, meaning the tech that actually changed the clutch on this Lamborghini Gallardo did not properly fill the transmission with enough oil. So what happens when you don't have enough oil? Well, so since every gear is paired with another gear on its uh, opposite shaft, as these gears rotate, they bang on this, each other and without enough lubrication and oil to cool the transmission as well as to provide enough lubrication the edges of all of these helical gears got scored and i talked with my shop teacher and he told me yes due to these uh, gears getting scored it's going to add additional pressure on the transmission uh, and on the gears when they're running and it may have provided enough pressure that the automated clutch system could not shift because if you think about it these automatic clutch systems, such as the E-Gear or Artronic, they are programmed to shift at a certain pressure. And if they notice that there is too much pressure when it's trying to shift into gear, it's not gonna shift. So that is the working theory of what happened with this transmission. Due to low lubrication, too much heat, all of these gears got banged up pretty hard. You can see here, there is light scoring here. And you know, here's the output shaft. Yes, due to low oil, these gears eventually get scored. They provide, they're not smooth. They're not rotating off of each other and it's not a smooth rotation. So it's providing needless pressure on the transmission and as well as the entire gear system. Therefore, the automated gear system will not shift since it, the pressure is too much for it to shift into gear. Let's take a look on uh, here. Here, let's take a look at fourth gear on the input shaft. You can see here there is scoring here. Oh yeah, that's that's a good shot right here. It is scored right here. And let's take a look at the pinion gear. So actually the pinion gear was scored too. I didn't uh, find it when I was initially inspecting it because it was still full of oil and I uh, cannot see it, but you can see here there is a slight discoloration on each edge of the pinion gear. And this is what the gear should normally look like. There, It should be really smooth and there should be no discoloration. There should be no scoring on the edges of the teeth here. And this, it looks really good. And these are one of the transfer gears in the transmission. And somehow where these transfer gears were located, they may have gotten just enough lubrication that it did not score, unlike the other gears here in the transmission. So what does that mean for this transmission? Overall, it's not salvageable. It is done. It's gone. So this is a textbook case of not filling your transmission with the right level of oil. This could happen. You can quite literally burn and ruin your gears. These gears are quite toast. They are not smooth anymore. They can't rotate smoothly and freely like they are used to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue and pretend that this transmission can work again. And I'm, I'm just going to show you how you, one would put everything back together, reassemble it, and just simulate how a transmission can get rebuilt. Let's assume that say here, I need to replace the synchros for third and fourth, I get new synchros, and then I'm going to go and put everything back together, show you how you do it, and we're going to end the video series like that.
So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually prep the synchros, the gears, prep everything, and also how to prepare certain parts of this transmission to get pressed onto the shafts. Because there are certain techniques that you need to do in order to make this easy on yourself. Otherwise, it will be a little bit difficult if you were to just straight on press these bearings as well as the synchronizers or hubs back onto the shafts here. So in addition to the scorched gears, I also need to measure the diameter of each blocker ring because once you have low oil and high heat, the blocker rings itself could warp as well. In addition to the scorched helical gears that you've seen. So what I'm going to do is measure the diameter of the blocker ring 15 times at, at different sections of the blocker ring. So this will give me a good sample of the diameter of each ring. So once I've measured each diameter 15 times for each blocker ring, I can then calculate the standard deviation of these diameter measurements and then look for outliers that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and measure this and I'll get back and tell you what I found. So I found out that one blocker ring is uh, out of spec, meaning that I found uh, this blocker ring specifically on fourth gear. It's a little warped. So I'll show you the data right now. And as you can see, I have two data points that are way outliers of what I expect the diameter to be. So therefore, yeah, if somehow the gears were okay, I would actually need to replace this blocker ring. And since Audi doesn't sell this blocker ring by itself, I would need to get a whole new synchro kit, meaning I'll get new synchros for both third gear and fourth gear, as well as new locking collar. So what does that mean for this transmission? Overall, it's not salvageable. It is done, it's gone. So this is a textbook case of not filling your transmission with the right level of oil. This could happen. You can quite literally burn and ruin your gears. These gears are quite toast. They are not smooth anymore. They can't rotate smoothly and freely like they are used to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue and pretend that this transmission can work again and I'm, I'm just going to show you how you, one would put everything back together, reassemble it, and just simulate how a transmission can get rebuilt. Let's assume that say here I need to replace the synchros for third and fourth. I get new synchros and then I'm going to go and put everything back together, show you how you do it, and we're going to end the video series like that. So in the next video, I'm going to show you how to actually prep the synchros, the gears, prep everything, and also how to prepare certain parts of this transmission to get pressed onto the shafts. Because there are certain techniques that you need to do in order to make this easy on yourself. Otherwise, it will be a little bit difficult if you were to just straight on press these bearings as well as the synchronizers or hubs back onto the shafts here.